G'day viewers, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to do LED globes. I'm told that there's a little connecting wire inside each one of them, which is a bond wire. I don't know this for sure. I'm only going by what I've seen. And you've probably worked out by now that I don't like to go by what people say because people talk rubbish. So I like to uh, find out for myself. I've got a wide variety of types of globes in here um, to make sure that I cover all angles. These ones are Christmas lights. There's loads of those. These ones are a really weird square never seen anything like these before four legs on them and uh, these ones are the little flat ones that you see on boards um, there's lots of ones off computers just general run of the mill globes there's globes from remote controls there's uh these ones here from the uh jacks where your ethernet cord goes in things like that there's, there's lots of them there's so many different sorts there's these things here whatever that is i'm assuming it's an led uh, i've got infrared ones in here as well uh, if i can find one the, the purplish colored ones for remote controls of tvs and videos and yeah i've, I've covered pretty much all, all avenues i've got all kinds of colors of, of types of globes this one whatever that is never seen those before either uh, a lot of them are just from computer boards VCRs you name it I've got it in here so so what we're going to do is find out together what these contain and I have no idea if there's gold like they say or if there's not so therefore I can't tell you the stats because I don't know be interesting to see if there is because I've looked at these things real close and I, I can't see any gold wire it doesn't mean it's not there especially the clear ones you think you'd be able to look through the clear one and and see but I don't know so anyway so I'm going to put these in the fire and roast them until they're brittle and they can be crushed into a powder and then I'm going to treat them. So that's what we're doing today. If you're interested in seeing if these have gold and if there's uh, much in them, stick around. Now this container is quite a big container and uh, I'd say kilos you know that I've only got my little precision scales I do 200 grams at a time and there's just too much here for I'm not going to do that so I'm going to guess two two kilos um, for those who like to have a start weight my kitchen scales are kaput I tried putting new batteries in yesterday and it just doesn't want to work anymore alrighty so I'll get to it I'll put these in the fire and we'll get started just to give you another perspective on how much is here, I tipped it into a rather large breakfast bowl and it's overflowing. So uh, I've got to find another container because I want to be able to pour these into the tin and not have them go everywhere else. So I'm on the hunt for a bigger container. But anyway, there's a fair bit here. I'd say at least two kilos. Okay, I've got them in the fire. They're smoking a fair bit as you can imagine and I've only put a layer about that much in the tin because I want to make sure that they all pyrolyze. If I have too thick a layer they might not pyrolyze in the middle and I will occasionally pick it up with the uh, uh, general locks here and sort of give them a shake make sure that they're able to move around in the tin. Uh, before I put some more in there and I'll just keep putting more in until they're all done hopefully this plastic will burn off soon 
Okay, so I've taken them out of the, uh, the tin. They were glowing red about five minutes ago. I'm cooling them down now. I'm not really sure if they're at the stage where I can crush them, but they were in the heat in the fire for uh, half an hour, so I'm assuming that's plenty. I'll find out when I go to crush them. It's getting late at night now, so um, I won't do it tonight. I'll have a crack at it in the morning. So there's the uh, LEDs which have been burnt a couple of days ago. I've been busy, haven't had a chance to get back to it. You can see there's lots of something in there, whether it's copper or uh, who knows, but it's all crumbly. It breaks up nicely. So now I'm going to put all this into my dolly pot and get my truck axle and smash it down to a pulp. And then I'm going to sieve it just to make sure that all the big clumps are broken up. And the whole lot will end up being processed, but I just want to make sure there's no big clumps. I want to try and get every bit of it smashed up into as smaller pieces as possible. Um, I'll do small amounts at a time. Probably like, I'll put that in there, maybe a little bit more than that at a time. Crush it all down, tip it into here, put some more of this into here. And any bits that don't filter through here will go back into here. I won't show the whole process, I've done it before, it takes too long, but I'm just showing you what I'm going to do. I'll come back when it's all been crushed and ready for washing. Okay, they've all been crushed down and sieved and ready to go, uh, ready to be washed to get rid of all the ash. I'll do that tomorrow. Once I've washed all the ash out of it, then I can uh, treat it with nitric to see if there's anything in there like silver plus it'll eat up all the copper and leave hopefully just the gold okay so I've uh, completely washed it thoroughly washed all the residue and now I'm going to put some nitric acid in there it's just water water in there at the moment I'll put a fair bit because there's a lot of copper in there I noticed to dissolve all that copper I don't know if there's any silver or not. I don't think there'll be any silver in light globes, but you never know. So now it's just time to let that work. Keep putting nitric in every time the reaction stops until there's no more reaction. That is without a doubt the strongest reaction I've seen from anything I've ever processed. It's crazy. Well, I've just turned this back on for today. I had it turned off overnight. And it's important, well, I feel it's important to show you this. It's rust, okay, inside the solution. And I know that a lot of videos don't show this. And this is what I don't like about most videos. They cut things out that they don't want you to see and include things that they do. So when you guys do this, you're gonna come across the rust and think, what have I done wrong? The thing is, you haven't done anything wrong. All right, um, nitric acid is an oxidizer. Be no different than using bleach, all right? It would be an oxidizer. And the steel in there from the, the legs of the globes would be rusting. Now, as soon as the nitric acid consumes all the steel, it will then also consume the rust. So this will go away. There's no need to panic. Just carry on. I get the same thing when I do IC chips. Anything you, you do that has the steel legs on it, you will find there will be rust. And then the, the, after all the steel's gone, the nitric will consume the rust and it's all gone. It goes away. So don't panic. If you've experienced this, you haven't done anything wrong. And I just wish there was more videos out there that showed everything instead of them continuously cutting out things that they think don't look good it's it's misleading I found it hard when I was learning and I hope that you guys like that I show you everything because I aim to help you guys learn and you can't learn if you don't see every step if people keep cutting things out and hiding things then when you face it you don't know what's going wrong so I just wanted to let you guys know, don't panic if you see this, just carry on, everything's okay. 
Okay, so I'm at the situation where if I keep adding nitric acid to remove the rust, I'm going to run out of room in the beaker. I don't have any bigger beakers, all my big beakers are broken. So what I'm going to do is filter everything there through my brewer's bag into a clean beaker and hopefully all the rust and everything, the liquid will go through, but the, I know the gold won't. The gold can't make it through that bag. And the gold hasn't been dissolved yet. There's been no um, hydrochloric acid anywhere near it, so there couldn't have been any dissolved gold. So everything that gets caught in here, I'll be able to put back into this beaker and continue the process. Anything that goes through will be used nitric and I'll be able to put in my silver bucket. So we'll do that. I need to go off, hand, off camera with two hands, so I'll do that now. So I've rinsed out the, uh, the nitric that was in there, all the rusty nitric, and rinsed it thoroughly until I got all the rust out. As you can see, there's uh, looks like some metals in there still. Some, something shiny I don't know how well it's coming up on the camera but I can see something shiny in there could be gold might not be I'm still in doubt as to whether there is gold or not and that's what this whole test is for to find out so just in case there's more base metals in there I'm going to put some more nitric in and keep trying to leach all the metals out until there's just gold left if there's any gold so I'll put some more nitric in now and put it back on the heat. Well, it's going rusty again which confirms that there's more base metals, mostly steel, in there. But it's nowhere near as bad as it was. So uh, it hasn't really heated up yet either. So I'll just wait for it to heat up and get the nitric to work. It shouldn't take long now. And remember I said that the nitric acid will eventually consume all the rust? There you go. It's um, been on heat now for four or five hours. No more reaction. Put a little bit of nitric in there, nothing else happened. So now I'm going to let it cool, and then filter it, and then give it a rinse. Make sure it's thoroughly rinsed of any uh, liquid with base metals. And then I'm going to put it in Acarugia. And we'll see if there's any gold in there. I'm skeptical. I don't think there is. But I can see how it could be feasible. So we'll wait and see. So I filtered the nitric acid out of the residue. It's just the last bit to go now. And then I'll put that into Aqua Regia and see if we've got any gold. I even though I know that even though I know there can't be any uh, gold in solution, I tested that and it's negative. I've had it on the heat for four days and getting at lots of fumes with nitric, just kept adding nitric. And then finally the fumes stopped. There's no more reaction. So now I'll filter it. And then once it's filtered, um, I'll test it to make sure there is gold in solution and then drop the gold. So what I did was I used the paper filter first to catch all the residue as you can see. The liquid's slowly going through now. And then as it's gone through into the, uh, the beaker, I've then switched it to another filter that only has cotton balls in it. Just to try and get some of the colour out of it. Um, not that it's helping, it's still going a red colour. But that doesn't matter. I did a test and there is gold in there. Yeah, uh, it probably looks dark on the camera, but it's actually very faint. There's uh, not much in there at all, but it's still gold. So I'll let that uh, finish filtering, and we'll drop it and see how much is there. The problem is, if there's not much gold, it's really hard to drop, and even if it does drop, it's uh, so so uh, tiny amount. But we'll try and see what happens. So it's all been filtered and denoxed. And I'm gonna pour some SMB in there, dissolved in water. There's no major reaction, which means it's uh, 
definitely been oxed. Waiting for some white foam to appear. And there we go, starting now. There's only a little bit left in the bottle, I'll just put this in. It's only a tiny bit there. So let's put that in. And now it's just a matter of waiting until the gold drops. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there wasn't a lot of gold. Um, so we'll put in there what's there. It looked like a nice layer on the bottom of the beaker until I dried it and now there's hardly anything here which is quite normal but we'll weigh it up anyway Point 0.18 of a gram out of all those lights that I did yeah, in my opinion they're not worth keeping but yeah, gold is gold. I wouldn't do them by myself. I'd put them with IC chips or something. Because it's all done the same way. I don't think I'd be in any hurry to save them in the future. But there you go. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll let you decide whether they're worth doing or not based on my results. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.